Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about policy development and some ethical issues. Um, so before we start talking about what is a policy, I want you to go and think about whether we have any of the policies on campus or at the universities. I think the first policy a lot of students could think about is attendance policies. Right, a lot of classes. They do actually have attendance policies, encourage students to participate in the class, and also actually get the experiences in learnings. Right, so that is a very very common uh, policy we have in the class. Right, another very common policy that students might um, have learned a lot is academic dishonesty policies. Right, so a thing about why do we need to develop something called academic dishonesty policies? Right, so because this is a problem um, that create a lot of unfairness among students, right, and also this is very unethical. Um, if we couldn't handle this problem and issue really well, it will create a lot of potential conflicts among students. So we do need to introduce uh, some of the policies called academic dishonesty policies. Right, another question people possibly want to think about is. And what kind of behavior has been considered as academic dishonesty, right? So the policy will actually need to give you the definition, let you know what kind of behavior has been considered is unethical, right? Let's look at the policies here. Okay, this is the policy um has been introduced by university. It's called academic dishonesty policy, right? So when we look at the policy, they give us the idea what kind of act has been considered as academic dishonesty, right? First of all, they talk about cheating has been considered as academic dishonesty, and they give you a lot of definitions. What has been considered as a cheating? So during the exam, when you're using the materials, um, that you shouldn't, um, will be considered as a cheatings, right? And another example is uh, plagiarisms. Right, plagiarism. They also give you the idea what has been considered as a plagiarisms. Right, plagiarisms are basically talking about um, if you word for word copy the other people's idea in your assignments, you'll be considered as a plagiarisms. Right, if you submit someone else's work as your own, um, that will also be considered as a plagiarisms. Right, if you rewrite someone's work and steal someone else, uh, steal someone else's idea has been considered as your own. Will also be considered as like plagiarism, so, right? They'll give you the definition, let you know what has been considered as a, a plagiarism. Right? The third types of the academics, this honesty behavior is a fabrications, and a lot of uh, subjects they may require you to um, conduct experiments. So a lot of time, if you fabricate those data, these informations, right? So those will also be considered as uh, academic dishonesty. So you can see. From this policy, the first a very important thing is you need to go and define what has been considered as academic dishonesty, right? You need to give people the example, consider about all the different kind of situations, uh, and then when it's really some students、uh, violate these policies, then we will have a policy, in in place, and then teach us how we're gonna handle that situation. So right, that's a very important part when we try to create the policy, and the second thing that we have to consider is about sanctions. So we know、um, that the policy mentions、uh, the cheating has been considered as academic dishonesty, plagiarism has also been considered as academic dishonesty. So if a student was cheating in the exams, or other students plagiarize in these assignments, or、uh, which kind of situation is even more serious, should they be receiving the same punishments? Right. So that's something you also need to indicate and explain in your policies. Right, so that can really provide people a standard solution to address some of the common problems and issue. Right, so this is、uh, examples of the academic dishonesty policies. When we look at the policies,、uh, why do we need to develop a policy in organizations? Because we are dealing with a lot of different kind of difficult situations on the daily basis. A lot of times, those answers might not be really clear. And also,、uh, in order to address some of the issues, we do need to introduce a policy can help us, you know, make the decision quicker, and also can help us address this decision properly.、Um, 
So there are a couple of examples in the sports industry. So one of the policy we talk a lot about in this class, uh, a policy in dopings, right? Drug testing policies. All sports organization they all have a drug testing top policies, right? And the second type of policy is called uh, cloud control in events. Uh, in our last lecture, when we were talking about risk management, we did talk about MFL introduced clear bet policy, right? Which is the policy how we are able to adjust these cloud control issue, try to protect um, our audiences and also enhance the safety in the events. And the third example, the policy in marketing and promotions, right? I'll give you example like when EA, um, you know EA. Uh, create a lot of different esport games. Uh, some people may play MFL games. Some people may play NBA game, and MHL games, right? So EA um, in their MFL games because they sign a contract with MFL player associations, so they're able to use all the current MFL players' image names in the games, and also they can use the MFL players their image for the promotions. Uh, however, um, MFL player association that only own the rights of the current MFL players, but they don't own the right of those retired players. So for instance, if EA, they want to use the retired players, such as Peyton Manning's images in their promotions, want to use their names, want to use their image in the games, right? So they would have to go inside a separate contract with Peyton Manning's, in addition to the big contract they signed with the MB, um, MFL player associations. Right, so this is the policies. Um, one of the example in the policy in the marketing in promotions. We also do need to introduce a policy in code of conduct that teach people how we need to behave in the organization. For instance, um, a lot of our business they do introduce the policies like um, employees. Uh, we cannot discuss our salary with other employees, right? And also, all employees are not allowed to uh, disclose confidential information about the organization to other people uh, on social media, right? So those are also you know, basic code of conduct um, has been introduced um, by majority of the organizations, right? And also that is a policy slay. Um, we'll give you an example in the situation, um, if a rival of your company is offering you a part-time job, could you take this job and doing two jobs at the same time? Majority of the company have to say no to that situation because that's really the conflict of the interest, right? So you cannot work for two rival organizations at the same time because people are worried that you might, you know, not intentionally disclose the crucial information to the other rivalries, but you know, the people might worry about that you are not ethical uh, as individuals. Um, so a lot of time you can't work for two rivalries at the same time, right? So those are those policies in code of conduct, right? We also have policy in service, right? We'll give you example. If uh, customers who bought the tickets um, for last night's games, but they forgot it, they have bought the tickets, so they missed the games, will you allow him to refund the unused tickets, right? Most of the situation, no, you can't refund the ticket that you forgot to use, right? So those are the policy in the service. Um, so those are the example that those, some of the policies in the sports organizations. And um, after giving you so many examples, people might want to know what is policy? How are we going to define a policy? So policies are broad guidelines of procedures for meeting the organization objective, right? So they always provide a framework for decision makings and they try to direct you to the right direction also with a common directions, right? They also are formal expressions of the organization's standing decisions on very important issues, sometimes are often recurring issues. So this kind of issue happen all the time. That's why we do need to introduce the policies to help us adjust this problem and issues. So one of the ex example I'm giving you here is a lot of you know professionals, firstly, they're all using salary cap policies later this semester. When we're talking about professionals, firstly, in the US, we will also spend more time talking about those salary cap policies. 
right, for the salary cap policies, right, the purpose for having a salary cap policy is they try to enhance the competitive balance between teams, and also they try to prevent one team from dominating the league, having all those best players in the league, right? So give an example. Um, in the last two seasons, so Golden State Warriors have a lot of great NBA All-Star players, such as Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, and Clay Thompson. Right? Although they have all those best players in the league, but the overall salary they can pay to these players is still the same as any other teams. Which means, I mean, those players, they, could set, they have to sacrifice the salary they can receive from the teams if they really want to chase for the champions and for the titles. Right, so that's why you understand um, those players can't stay in the team for a very long period of times. After um, the team helped them achieve the titles, they will be more likely to go and join another team because they really need you know, having a better salary to show their values. Right, so those uh, salary cap policies try to prevent the team keep winning the championships all the times. Right, so try to enhance the competitive balance between teams. Right, so um, what kind of standards that can help us to develop good policies. So the good policies uh, will have to deal with the issue quickly and effectively because we are facing that issues all the time. Having a very good policy can really help us uh, accelerate the decision making process, can help us make the decision quicker um, uh, and fair. Right. And second thing is we try to promote fair, equitable decisions um, supported by the rational that both reasonable and easy to understand. Most of the policy we are written in using a plain languages. We are trying not to use very complicated languages or very long sentences, hard for people to understand or get the correct meanings. So we try to simplify um, the policies, let everyone understand what his policy is talking about and also easy for them to follow. Right? Uh, also, when we are trying to create a policy, we need to consider different kind of situation try to make sure include all kind of situations in the policies, right? So they will try to promote a fair decisions. And also we have the rational why we are making these policies, why we decided to make a decision like this, right? And the policy also encourages consistency. Uh, ensuring the same answer to the problem is applied between departments and over time. So for instance, if two people violate that that the policies, they should got the same punishments, right? We're using an example. Um, if you are track and field athletes, if you fail the first doping tax, so you will be banned by IAF, which is International Governing Bodies for track and field for uh, one and a half years. So these are standard decisions, right? If the athletes who fail the doping tax, so basically, most of situations, they will receive one and a half years bans, right? If you're swimmers, normally you will got two years ban if you fail the doping test for the first time, right? If you fail the doping test for the second time, normally you got banned for four years. But if you fail the doping test for the third time, you normally will ban for life. So those are like uh, standard solutions when we're facing that situations. However, we also do understand, you know, some athletes might have the intention to use that uh, performance enhanced drug to improve that performance, but some of them don't have the intention just accidentally have that performance enhanced drug. So we also need to have some backup plan how we're going to deal with that different situation and different issues. So that is um, how we're going to create a very good policies. Um, the next part we're going to talk about the elements of the policy design. So we're mainly going to talk about four parts. First thing is we need to go and develop goals. Second thing we're going to look at a causal model, and the third one we're going to look at the policy target, and the last one we're going to look at policy instru instruments. Right, so um, the first things we're going to look at is a goal. So when we try to develop a policy, we need to think about um, what the purpose for having this policy in the organization. So then most of the policies, um, they have a three goals they are trying to achieve. First goal is they try to eliminate a problems. Right. Second goal, they cannot really eliminate the problem, but try to elevate these problems. The third goal is we try to manage the problems, keep it from becoming worse. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. First one, right, um, elements 
a problem. What kind of policy is we try to minimize these problems and try to solve these problems, right? So the example um, is like drug testing policy, right? The reason for us to have a anti-doping policy is we try to prevent athletes from using performance enhancing drugs during the competition, right? We also they are tried we are trying to uh, promote fairness in the competition. And also we try to promote health among athletes because using this performance enhanced drug is not good for health for these athletes. Right. So those is the policy, the purpose is we try to solve that problems, minimize these problems. Right. And there's a uh, one type of policy. Second type of policy is called aggregated problems. We cannot solve the problems at all. So we can aggregate these uh, problems. So one of the example here is a social media policy. Right, so in college sport, you know, um, coaches um, is actually not allowed to use the social media um, to recruit those high school athletics, right? And coaches and athletes all like using social media, but they don't really know how they're able to use the social media properly, right? So having a social media policy is not we're preventing them from using social media. But the purpose is that we are trying to teach them how you are able to use social media efficiently, right, and effectiveness and efficiency, right. So this is uh, we are not trying to prevent you from using it, but we're gonna teach you, educate you how we're able to use uh, properly, and then you can really uh, incorporate social media into your personal branding and also enhance your brand values. Right, so that's the second thing. Third thing is we try to manage our problems, right? So uh, one of the example is uh, recruiting policies, right? In the NCAA, we do introduce a lot of different recruiting policies, right? So um, a lot of the questions people might ask is like, what should a coach follow when they decide to recruit a players from the high schools? And could they reach out to these um, players uh, before the kids committed to the school. So a lot of these kind of questions people might want to ask. How we are able to manage these uh, problems is we are going to introduce like recruiting policy and teach them how we are able, to, how, what, how you are able to do. Right. Another example is a security policies, right? To enhance the security is we, how we're going to introduce a different kind of procedures and then we are able to enhance the security in the stadiums. Right, so those are the goal. We have three goal. One goal is try to eliminate the problem. The second goal is we try to have live, elaborate the problem. The third one is we try to manage the problems. The second elements of the policy design is we need to sorry. Second uh, elements of policy design is we need to go and develop uh, causal models. Uh, so we're gonna think about when we when we develop a policy, we have to think about from a very different perspective. Understand what kind of issue might involve. So in this policy, we try to address all the different aspect that we have considered uh, when we're developing or creating these policies. So the causal model is a theory that will cause the problems, and also that is about the interventions which will help us solve the problems. The causal models include um, five different aspects. The first one is uh, acceptable, acceptabilities, uh, which means uh, the levels of the tolerance, uh, how likely we're able to accept these situations. And the second one is accountabilities. So who should be responsible for that? Who must answer if that thing happens? The third one is liabilities. So who is legally responsible for these kind of situations. The next one is reliabilities. So that's an emphasis about consistency, making sure um, this uh, policy you developed is try to target everyone. Everyone is a fear in, in front of these policies. Last one is the responsibilities. If someone violate the rules or if someone uh, who's not able to uh, meet the requirements, uh, how we're gonna blend them, how we're gonna punish them, right? So this is um, the rational when we try to develop the policy. So we're using one example to help you understand this one. Um, so one of the very common policy in majority of the organization is a travel 
reimburse policies, right? Most of the business, you um, some of the employee may have um, may need to have to a lot of business trips. When they are going to a business trips, a lot of time, right? They have to pay up front, right? When they come back from the business trips, so they could request for the reimbursements. So uh, when we try to develop this travel reimbursement policy, there are a lot of things that we need to consider, right? The first thing is uh, time frame, and uh, time frame. So the people who travel for business trips, when they come back, uh, when they try to ask for the reimbursements, when, when could they ask for the uh, reimbursements? Can they ask for the reimbursement a year later? Um, most of situations not because we talk about when we talk about budgeting, we talk about we develop budget for each of the financial years. Most of situation is if you travel this year, right? So you have to go and reimburse this year because all those receipts you're gonna turn in is only gonna be effective in this financial year. So right, so we have to go and develop a time frame. Second thing, we we have to develop something called procedures, right? So if people who want to, uh to reimburse these receipts. So what is the procedures like? A lot of organizations, they say, you have to go and fill out this form, and when you submit all the receipts, um, you need to have your managers review all these receipts that you submit and sign off. And then um, accounting department also going to review this receipt and then and complete this process and pay back the money to you to your bank account. Right. So this is the procedures. You, you would like to have... Uh, you need to indicate the reimburse procedures. Right. Third thing is what items could be reimbursed and what item we couldn't reimburse. Of course, anything related to the business, you can reimburse, right? So you take the flight, you stay in the hotel, right? Um, you eating the food, those can reimburse. However, um, what if you spend some money hang out with your friends, right? So those money that you cannot reimburse a lot of times. So for instance, you go out to eat a restaurant, um, the money spent in the restaurant can be reimbursed. But what if you order a beer? Most of the situation, most of the business, they won't reimburse if you order a beer, right? Um, so what kind of item could be reimbursed? Those who need to be included in the policies. And also, who is your target audience? So when you develop this policy, are you trying to target everyone in the organizations, all managers and regular employee has been treated differently, right? For instance, you may allow regular employee to stay at a three-star hotel if they travel for a business trip, but the top manager, CEO, they're able to stay in a five-star hotel, right? So that will have like a different standards for all the employees. And the last one is about the responsibilities, right? Responsibilities. Uh, we talk about if you want to reimburse the money, you need to have the receipt. What if you lost your receipt? So uh, can the organizations like pay back the money since you don't have the receipt? So basically every employee need to be fully responsible for collecting this receipt during the business trip and they're able to give back this receipt to the company, right? So those are all the different kinds of situations you have to go and consider. So when you're going to develop a travel reimburse policy and then you need to think about how you'll be able to incur all the things that we just discussed, right? In the, in the policies, right? So this is about causal models, right? The next one is about uh, policy targets. So when we try to develop a policy, we need to think about the individual groups whose behavior will be changed as a result of the policy. We have a two groups, right? We have an internal policy. We try to target all the internal stakeholders, mainly the employees, but we also have a external policy. They try to target external stakeholders, such as fans, media, um, and also sponsors. I'll give you a couple examples for the internal uh, policies, right? The travel reimbursement policy we talked about previously is considered as an internal policy. We try to target employees, right? Um, NCA has a recruiting policies, particularly targeting the coaches, right? These internal um, stakeholders. 
right? University will also introduce security policy. For instance, uh, without your ID, you cannot get access to certain facilities, right? So those are all internal policy. We try to target um, our employees. We also have some policy considered as uh, external policies. We try to target external stakeholders, right? So one of the examples we talk about is MFL clear bad policies, right? So those are we try to target fans. If you want to get access to the stadiums, watch your MFL games, you will have to go and follow these policies, right? You need to only have this kind of bad, right? Completely transparent. Right? So those are the basic rules. And the second example is all the professional sports team, sports league, they have a uh, media access policies, right? So when the uh, game is over, so whether you allow media to get access to players' locker rooms and how long could they be there? Um, so those are also something you would like to include in the policies. So for these kind of media access policies is you try to target um, sports media, which has been considered as external stakeholder because they don't work for you directly, but your policies will impact their behaviors, right? So this is about policy targets. And the last element is about policy instruments, right? Governing body, when you try to develop policy, you can use instrument to help you achieve the goal because these in instruments could cause the target to do some things or uh, they would not otherwise do, right? So there are three types of the instrument you could use. First one is you have a directive powers, right? So when you have a directive powers, um, then you understand, um, then you, you could, for instance, if you are event organizers, right? So you have the right to make the policies, right? Um, if you decided to cancel someone else's registrations, you do have the power to do it, right? So that's why you have the directive powers. So another example is like a lot of uh, customers would like to participate in the like uh, activity organized by those um, like retailers, right? So retailers always say the result of these activities will be explained by the companies. Right, so those do you have a directive power. Second one is that you have a benefit. So give example, NCAA has uh, revenue sharing policies. If you don't follow the policy, you possibly lose this benefit, lose this revenues. Right, the third one is a sanction. Right, sanction is very important that we're gonna spend time to talking about it today. So sanction is if someone else who violates policy, what kind of punishment they will be receiving. So this is something we call sanctions. So how are we gonna develop a policy? We have four steps. The first step is we try to define this issue in the facts and looking at the scope of the problems and its impacts. Um, during this process, we need to collect a lot of information from both sides to help you to understand this problem fully. It's not just listen to one side stories. You would like to get, collect information from both sides, get the idea how we are able to handle that. And then we're going to evaluate the potential impact of each of the options and chose the favorable options and specialize define these actions. Okay, so let's go and look at the case studies, how we are able to develop a solid policies and then we're going to talk a little bit about what kind of assignment that you have to complete today so in these case studies so if you were an athletic director one of the very common issue that you're facing is athletes ask for traveling to a particular road trip on their own right so this is a very very common uh, issues um, so how are you going to handle these issues? So before you're going to develop a policy, um, you possibly have to think a lot, a, um, a lot of different kind of uh, issues. First of all, whether these things is very important to you as athletic directors, why is the major concerns, right? If only one player have that issue, that's fine. But if a lot of players have that issue during the season, maybe having a lot of time, you possibly need to think about, we need to develop a policy. Right, and also will this become a larger issue for you to consider, right? So if someone travel by themselves, what will be the worst scenario? How would that impact 
the image of the organization, how would that influence the operation of the organizations? And will these matters, if the athletes will travel with the parents, um, and also if they travel with the girlfriend, is the same, right? Does it matter if they travel with the parents, or does it matter if they travel with the girlfriends? That could be very different, right? And who be responsible in the event of accidents? Right, you also have to think about and who should be the one making the final decision whether you will allow these players um, to travel by themselves. Right, so those are the things you would like to consider um, as athletic directors before you're going to develop this policy. Let's look at this policy. This policy is not long at all. This is actually coming from the textbook, not long at all, but it cover a lot of very interesting information. Right, this policy say it's expected that athletes will travel to and from athletic contests with their teammates on a carrier provided by the colleges. In the event athletes wish to make alternative travel plan, he or she must obey a f the form permissions for athletic uh, alternative uh, travel plans right, from the athletic office. This form requests information regarding the intended modes of the transportation, a rational for the request, Permissions may be granted on a case-by-case case only when the form is signed off by both head coach and the athletic directors. Permission requests must be made 40 hour, 48 hours prior to travels. This entire policy is no long at all, but it covers five very important informations here. First information, look at the first sentence. It showed the attitude and expectation for the organization. So athletes is expected to travel with the teams and using the characters provided by the colleges to away games. Right. So they made a very clear distinctions about what the organization is expect everyone to follow. Right. But they also mentioned about the understand some athletes may be travel by themselves, would like to have alternative travel plans. So people, and, and then they introduce a procedures. If that happened to you, you want to travel by yourself, what should you do? Right, so he need to get this form from the athletic departments, right? And in this form, they will have to indicate what's the rational of this request. Why do you want to travel by yourself? Maybe you have an exam on that day. So you want to complete the exam first and then, you know, complete this and the travel by yourself. Maybe uh, you have some family issue, you happen at home at that time. I think it's more convenient for you to travel with your parents rather than travel with the teams. Right? So a lot of different kinds of situations that you would like to put into the considerations. Right? So and also if you're not travel with the university, what kind of transportation are you gonna take? Are you going to take the airplane? Are you going to take the public transport? Are your parents going to drive you to the uh, events? Right. So, and also they let you know, um, it's not like you submit this request, you will allow to travel by yourself, right? The permission is granted only case by case basis, right? And also who made these decisions, right? This phone need to sign off by not just head coach, both athletic directors. So who made the decisions? Right. Head coach and athletic directors. And then they also talk about the timelines. Right. You have to submit these things 48 hours before your travels. Right. So those are these policy has indicated. Right. So this policy is very short, but it indicates a lot of very important information. Right. So these policies also let you know what these Travel form looks like, right? What is travel form looks like? Okay, so this is the um, example for developing a very good solid policies. How could we make this policy better? So this policy basically cover most of the things. Right. One more thing, this policy is missing, is sanction. What if students violate the rules? What will be the punishments? Right, so if you are the decision maker, so you possibly would like to um, consider about that situations, include that in that policies areas, right? 
So um, after learning how to develop a good policy, um, you will have to go and complete uh, online discussion today. So today's online discussions, um, you only you are also going to develop a policy. So this scenario is you're currently a high school athletic director. You are supervising a large sports program with 19 sports, and you are determined to be a fair to each of the teams. One of your biggest problems right now is you have six sports require practice and the game time on the only outdoor facilities you have in your high schools. I think about six different sports, they practice and also play the game in the same um, facilities. So now you are asked to write a policy to describe of the procedure if the team who want to use the school's properties, right, and set the boundaries for the team if they want to use the fields of the school's um, properties. So what will be the basic elements when you try to develop this policy? First of all, you need to include the titles. What's the title of these policies? Right. You could say whatever well, title related to you know facility usage. Right. Make sure the title is brief, straightforward, short. Right. Everyone when you look at the title, you know what this policy is talking about. Second thing is talking about the purpose of this policy. Why? do we need to have this policy? Why was the legal and rational reasons? Why do we need to have these policies? Right. Third one is a policy statement, specific when and how to conduct these policies. Right. Specific statement. Next one is a sanctions or special specific action to be taken. And last one is, is there any supporting document um, need to be uh, provided by the teams, right? So for this policy, it will give you some idea how you'll be able to write a very good policy. Think about it, one of the biggest problems at the moment right now is um, you have one facility but six teams are using it, right? So this is your biggest problems, right? So one of the biggest problems you're facing is how could you really balance this interest between different teams because you want to treat everything equally. You don't want one team keep using the same facility but the other team have no facility to use, right? So that's something you would like to consider about it, right? When you try to develop a purpose statement, right, you possibly will try to minimize this potential conflict existing between these six teams, right? How are you going to best use these facilities, right? If a team, they want to use these facilities, what is the procedures, right? Do they have to fill out a form and should they submit this request to the athletic director, let the athletic director to decide whether they can use the facility the time they want for next week? So what's the procedures like, right? And will you post uh, like a schedule each week and keep every team informed when the team will be using the facility at that time? Right, so that's something you would like to consider about it in, in these policies. Right, um, that's the first thing. The second thing you would like to consider is what if the team find out they can't use the facility associated by yourself but have to use the facility outside the campus will you allow them to use the facility outside the campus right if they want to use the facility outside the campus what is application procedures like right that's something you will have to consider about that's the second thing right third thing is you have to go and consider about other situations right what if one team is actually currently using the facility and someone else another team shows up they also want to use the facilities right? how are you going to handle that situations Right. And the last one is a sanction and punishment. So you would like to introduce a sanction and punishment to make sure the policy is abated by all the different teams. Right. Very important is you have to go and develop a procedure. If the team want to use the facilities, how should they apply and how should they you know, get approved by the athletic directors? Right. So this is um, uh, the policies. For this online discussion, so 
you will have to develop a policy with no less than 250 words, right? So this policy need to cover title, policy, purpose, policy statement, sanction, or other document if that's needed, right? And that's a one part is accounted for eight points. So you need to be finishing it by March 31st at midnight, Tuesday midnight. On, on Wednesday, you will also go into a uh, comment and respond to another two students' answers. So each replies need to have more than 50 words. This, this will be counted for two points, right? If you want to get 10 points for these discussions, online discussions, you will need to finish two parts in order to get the full credits, right? So this is about the online discussion that you have to do after learning this class. And if you have any other questions, please send me an email and let me know. Uh, all right, uh, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and let me know if you have any other questions.